two, one. Good afternoon slash early evening slash evening in Europe, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the semifinals of the Hot Mess Fall Tournament 2016 between teams Daddy and Aphelion. I am Rails Barlow, one of your casters and one of your tournament administrators for today, and we're bringing you this match right here on Dawkins Twitch. This is a best of one match on New York between these two teams. Both have done a lot of home and away games so far. They chose this game to be a best of one due to the ping, and my co-caster, for this lovely match this afternoon is the one and only Mr. Prodby Sim. Peace Sim, it's, it's been a long, long tournament to get to right here. Not as long as Bleed Out, but these teams have made it this far, and the winner will face Team Pub Stars oh, in the Grand Finals. Help! Help! Indeed they shall, and, uh, dude, I'm pretty excited to see this game. I, I cast a couple of the earlier games in this tournament, and they weren't so incredibly exciting, but I'm very excited to see... Like, there's some great roster shuffles from the previous tournament with these top tier players, and it's going to be really great to see which one comes out on top once this is all said and done. And Aphelion versus Daddy is a pretty good way to start that. Yeah, I would say so. And there was also a little bit of a question as to what rosters the teams are going to be running today. We do have the complete team for Team Daddy here so far. And then, as I mentioned, I think a little bit pregame, if anyone's watching, I'm not exactly sure who the fourth for Team Aphelion is. And this is actually interesting to note because these teams are currently second and third in the standings coming from the Swiss stages. So I think pre like pre the Swiss portion of the tournament, I'm pretty sure Daddy was ranked number one. And then I think, or no, actually maybe number two. I, but the way it eventually turned out is that Pubstars was the number one seed coming from those Swiss stages. And this is the second and the third seed going up against one another. So technically, Team Daddy is favored, but... Already, we had a little bit of a prediction happen before this match even started about Team Ophelion being the winner because on Left 4 Dead Nation, Super posted that he was already ready to schedule with Team Pub Stars. They just need to get the screenshot from this game. I would call that confidence, Pete Sim. I call that, uh, that's a bit of confidence. That's being cheeky, you know, playing a little mind games with the other team. Just being like, no, there's no chance. We don't even think about you. But uh, at the same time, man, that's going to make it such a great story if there's an upset here. You know, there's there's your motivation for Team Daddy. It's like, oh, let's make Super eat his words right here. Yeah. That's the fun part about all these, because you mentioned the team shuffling going on. These players have played on the same teams as each other, despite the fact they're on opposite sides right now in many ways. Here, or they just, they've been around long enough where everybody knows one another. And I think Dawkins mentioned before this started that there was a similarity between Team Aphelion and Team Helheim slash Sarandi. And there is, because before the playoff stages of this, there were, like, I want to say two other players, two, I think, yeah, two other players who were on Team Aphelion's roster. But then because of those players being unable to play, they had to make a shuffle, and they got the opportunity to from the admin team, as is the usual course, after the Swiss stages. And that's when Thug Life officially joined that team. So now it's... Hota, Dane, Thug, and Supra for them. That's a very familiar lineup. On the other side, though, kind of a similar story where three-quarters of that team is not only... I want to say there's probably, like, you, you know it better than I do in terms of what teams they were on before these previous tournaments that we've seen in the past couple years, but that's three-quarters of Team Whatevers. It was Yams instead of Hib for the fourth on that team in RBT3, and, of course, Bravo and Purple have played together for quite a long time. And, of course, the addition, as I mentioned, is the one and only Hib, this is going to be very, very interesting to see how it plays out, I would say. Yeah, definitely so. Bravo and Sam have played together a ton. Purple and Bravo have played together a ton. Uh, Hib's hey, kind of the new one to the roster, know. but I'm very excited to see. I mean, Hib has played with nearly the same group of people for the last, like, five tournaments That's with asshole, minor man. changes. And so it's really interesting to see him on a new team, need some help. Uh, especially such a high-level team that's had great tournament results recently as well. I notice uh, Thug Life on Team Aphelion has a has an Overwatch avatar right now, mm -hmm. so I'm guessing maybe that's where he was during the Swiss stages. Yeah, but, uh, um, that's, that's probably true, because the, uh, the one missing piece on that, I would say, oh. is... Right, it would be Miro, and Miro didn't play this tournament because he's been playing Overwatch. Hey, thanks! Indeed. I, I also remember at the end of last tournament, it was, what, it was Super's team versus Danae's team in the finals in the, what was it called, previous tournament? That, that you know, that funny pun that, name that goes along with... 
with Ghost Long Left 4 Dead 2, like, bleeding oh, bleed, out. Bleed out, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the finals was, it was Super's, like, US-based team with Purple and all of them versus Get Danny's down, team. And I remember here, in the no, last couple thanks. weeks, Super was playing a lot of Overwatch instead of uh, scrimming Left 4 Dead 2. And I haven't seen that so much this time around. So uh, that's one point up for Supra. I feel like if he is actually focused on Left 4 Dead 2 right now, he's a force to be reckoned with. And that team looks super strong. Exactly. And the same can be said for the other side. I saw at least a few of them playing actually right before this game. And the scrims have been more regular, I'd say, for both sides. And at this point now, we are going to see, uh, like I said, because it's a one-game matchup on Parish, right? And that's Parish 1 through 5. This is going to be a... I, I almost want to say it's anyone's game because of how balanced everything is. So we have one player with green ping and then three with orange on each side. This is kind of the step that you'd want because while the home and away system is great, when there are opportunities like this, this is going to be, I'd say, more exciting to have it all down just to one game when it's as balanced as we see it in front of us right here. And yes, Prodigy Sim is Russia. We do have Mr. Smith, a.k.a. Dopeboy, asking to be let onto the server, which I think is great, because he's covered the past, I don't know how many tournaments, for the Russian viewers. And once that's set up, then I do believe we will be able to go live. I'm the one actually is going to be holding, holding it up, aside from Hota. So, and there we go, now we do have 14 slots, so then that means we can get this game underway as soon as Hota readies up, and... Like I said, winner take all. This is what I love about the competitive Left 4 Dead 2 scene is games like this where there is a little bit of, I would say, animosity between both these teams just because they know each other so well. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, it'll be definitely interesting to see who Pubstar plays off against next week, and that match is sure to be a great show as well, but this one might as well be. I mean, you could swap any of those three teams around, and it could be a grand finals match, so this will be a nail-biter. We'll have to see. Parish. One through, did you say one through five? Mm -hmm. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah. Does that include the fifth map, the final map, which is the yeah. finale? Yeah, that, that final map that's got the finale thing. Oh, man. Well, yeah. then, I mean, this can go anywhere. The number of times purple has come out on a win because of a Paris finale is at least, at least, I mean, out of all the times that Paris finale has actually been played in tournaments, it's a pretty good number. So uh, we will have to see how this goes. Exactly, yeah, and there's a lot of history, like I said, of that finale being, I don't know, because it, it's, it's ironic that we have, well, actually, I'd say actually not ironic, but appropriate that yourself and Dawkins are in here, because you guys know more about that than I do, but we are going live right here, the semifinals of the Hot Mess Tournament, second game of those semifinals, winner plays Team Pubstar's Team Daddy and Aphelion coming out of the gate right here, it is going to be Team Daddy on the survivor side with Sam, Bravo, Hib, and... Papa Pan, which is actually purple. And who do we have for Team Aphelion, Mr. Peace? Team Aphelion, we have Hota, Thug Life, Supra, and Salty, aka Dan. Here comes the first hit. That Hunter getting shut down. Jockey shut down as well. Charger's gonna whiff. We got two damage out on the board, and I believe that was from the Charger stumble. Indeed, everything else getting shut down right there. We do have our first Witch of the Game. Sam going for the free crown, and he is going to get that Witch down before any other spawn drop. Our tank is going to be at 59%, and we do indeed have a Team Daddy Worms. If anyone who's interested on hearing that, we can Reloading. definitely bring that to you at the most critical times, such as right now, because our first tank of the game for Team Aphelion is up in the hands of Super himself, the green ping player for Team Aphelion. Let's see exactly what he decides to do with it. How about we take it right over to a survivor-sided Team Daddy Worm and see how they play it. Give me that daddy. Back up, back up, back up. Don't get punched, don't get punched, don't get punched. That's not bad. Are you just gonna lay there all day? 
Yeah. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, Pass. from that team. Daddy World's oh, first tank in the hands of Super Imagine to get just about four or five punches right there. His support was able to go in and manage to land a couple of those pins. But as we can see, there's a little bit of a conversation going in infected chat right there because Peace and that could have gone a lot better. Yeah, it definitely could have. It kind of looked like maybe Super was lagging a little bit as he went in. Uh, he finally managed to get a good corner. They got one cap, but there was a nice solo shutdown on that smoker. And the person who cleared themselves from that also popped the uh, hunter right afterwards. But next hit coming in. We do have a two boom. Jockey's going to get cleared super quick along with that tongue. Spit's going to go out. Not doing a whole lot other than getting this boom in right off of that hit. And uh, SI spawns getting a little delayed. Looks like they're going to hold on to him for maybe one final hit before safe room. Yeah, they're really hoping they have a charger in this next hit, because right now, even though the map distance is nerfed in Ace Mod, this is a great show of, for that nerf, I should say, a great health bonus to start off with, especially with the white potential of that first tank. Team Daddy inching their way towards the safe room here. The Infected did get the hit that they wanted, though. It's a spitter, jockey, smoker, and a charger. Now, I don't want to say the map one of Parish is inconsequential, but this is definitely a momentum-based game, no more so than in an elimination game right before the Grand Finals. This is what you want on Survivor from both teams, that you want to see play like this. And obviously, that tank getting shut down helped their case, but if they can avoid one more hit, it's only two hits after tank to save for him. So as long as they play it well, they can get him with a nice bonus. Jockey's going to be going in. Smoker pull does go out. Charger gets shut down. And that's the exact shutdown that you want if you're Team Daddy. This has been a good Survivor round for them so far. Yeah, definitely has been. I mean, outside of the tank, they took next to no damage. Maybe yeah. just... A less than 10 damage from any of those hits altogether. Sam getting some great kills there once again on that final hit. I believe he took down the jockey and the charger all on his, or almost all on his own. They were both going after him. So a 412 bonus gonna gonna put the survivors of Team Daddy at 712 points right there. And it's gonna be up to Aphelion to try to match that survivor performance once again. Exactly, and I mean, it's no longer having like 800 or 900 points on this first map right here, but that's pretty, pretty darn good, even with that nerf being mentioned. And we actually have some fast ready-ups going out. We're going to be going live right here. Second half, Aphelion needs to respond now on the survivor side, and this is a great chance for Team Day to get a multiple hundred point lead going into that second map. And it looks as though Dawkins broke something, which is bad, but I think just because of spectating like that, it also made Hib stop. So now Hib is going to go live. And yes, you made them be ready. Hey, let's see what team Aphelion is able to do. It'll also be interesting to see who has the tank for Team Daddy. First hit, once again, is a Hunter, Spitter, Jockey, and a Charger for the Special Infected team. We see some baiting going out from the Survivors. It'll be interesting to see how they play it, because they are also going to have three players with that orange tank. Indeed, they are. All, both teams have been using this triple Uzi single shotgun loadout. Seems to be four, pretty common. They're four right now. Oh, are they? Oh, wow, they are. Here comes the hit. Hunter's going to get shut down. Jockey shut down. There's going to be a spit on the corner on Coach, getting six damage on the board. Not terrible, but very similar survivor Reloading. performance to what we saw in that first half. Reloading. Yeah, I was surprised at that, actually, but I guess it does make sense. Reloading. Team Serenity and also Helheim are known for using four Uzi attacks sometimes. This is how you do it to crown a witch like that. Obviously not an intentional glitch going Reloading. out right there. But everybody has to focus that wish down. They do it quite nicely in between those sets. Now the tank Grabbing is up for Team Daddy into the hands of Papa Pan, aka Purple. Hit going out here as well. Smoker does get a pull. Charger gets a couple of punches. This is a big tank, piece in. Indeed it is, and that was a big amount of damage for just a little quick hit as the tank spawned in. Dan all the way down to 63 HP right there. That's well within three punch range. And uh, Papa Pan, Purple. Taking this tank up, I kind of wonder how, what their commit's going to look like. We saw the commit from Aphelion really take its time, um, wait for a second pass, and then just go straight in like that. And I have to see if... Yeah, it looks like it's mostly just going to be a game of sacks. Get the SI setup they wanted to commit with. Keep sacking slots until they get it. Looks like they're happy with this jockey hunter right now. Let's just drop that boomer. Probably going to be looking for a smoker, I'd assume. Smoker seems yeah. pretty strong. I think there's one or two ways you can go with that. Like, usually I like a boomer in this area. I know a lot of teams share that sentiment. Just do the fact if people get, like, even one boomer, there can be a great amount of common coming in. But instead, Purple's going to be committing with this 3-cap. Jockey Charger and a Hunter as he pushes away. And those four Uzi's already doing work on him, but he's got the split that he wants. Pushing to the survivor into the corner. Gets his punch onto Rochelle. Charger going for the cover. There is already a jockey lane, but the jockey gets cleared. Hunter has a separation cap on the side. Purple going for Donna, and he's going to get him down in that corner. He has about just under a 1,000 health left. Gets a nice oh, wow. punch on the coach. As well, he makes another punch right there at the end, and that's a good amount of damage going out. Again, comparable from the tank with the support, lining up some good separation capitalization right there. 
Yes, indeed. Two out of the three SI landed. Just the Charger was unable to really find a target, as is fairly common, since he has sort of the worst mobility out of the three of those. But uh, great damage across the board, and they've already chipped that bonus down to a 333, which is almost 100 points lower than what Daddy got in the first half. And they've still got maybe two more attack before safe from here. Go, here comes the next one. Jockey's gonna get stuffed, but that pounce does get a spit placed on top of it. Pole actually gonna get some damage in the end as well. Chipping off another 20 or so damage. There's 20 or so points from the damage bonus. Yeah, and that should be what? Like, probably one more staggered hit before safe room because Team Affiliate are booking it. They know that those spawns are going to be coming up right as they're getting to the door. And it's going to be a Charger, Boomer, and two others still in the spawn queue. They're going to have to start going before all four spawns are up. Charger does get the spawn. They're looking at the roof, and they actually have managed to get them to hesitate. The Charger's almost dead. Boomer does manage to land. Jockey going for Nick. Charger gets shut down. M2 goes out. Not going to land, and we do have a spit going into the safe room instead. Nick taking a little bit more damage, but again, it's really just chip. They've delayed them a little bit, and Hota actually is still standing in the corner, not quite inside. Again, just kind of chip. It's going to be a comparable health bonus but it is going to be a 100 point score differential in favor of Team Daddy starting off right here, about 104 points. Pretty inconsequential, both teams made it piece in, but I'd say the momentum is a little bit on Daddy's side. Yeah, just a little bit. They definitely got some good hits. Their tank fight looked a lot stronger, I think, than uh, Team Aphelion's. I mean, Aphelion got pretty good damage on their tank fight, but just the separation, the capitalization on that, really seemed to favor Daddy during that tank fight. Uh, one sort of interesting thing I want to point out, that last hit as they were going to the safe room for as long and like drawn out as that hit seemed with the boom landing and spit separations and everything, they only took like four damage during that whole thing. And so that like includes health bonus, like commons hitting them and all of that. Just, just they lost eight points off of their bonus, which turns into like about four damage during that whole thing. So just really high level play from both of these teams here especially on Survivor's side, dealing with these hits with, like, the minimum damage possible. And I also Indeed. did notice that Aphelion switched to a 2-2 uh, two -two setup there about halfway through the map as they were rushing for that safe room, which is kind of interesting to see. I'm always interested in the weapon loadouts, because that's one of the big things that can, like, change from config to config, is, like, what weapon loadout Exactly, yeah, and goes four the best. Susies. The four Susies and Ace mod are really, really interesting to see. But we are going to be going live. Second round right here. Our tank is going to be at 65%, our witch is going to be at 42%. Now, we're going to see some of the Ace mod changes that were used in terms of that event in play here, where the survivors really have one area to hold it out. And then, of course, they can kill that tank in the post-trailer area. Our first hit here is going to be a Spitter, a Hunter, a Jockey, and I believe the four spawn is a Charger. Indeed, it is. So that's going to be a 3-1. Pretty good damage potential for this. We're going to be seeing Team Daddy coming out of the safe room. Jockey managed to slam with 100, takes the Jockey's target. Charger going in, going to whip. That could have been a lot worse, PSM. Yeah, definitely could have been. Uh, they did manage to get a little bit of spit damage on top of it, so not a terrible hit for the in terms of damage for the setup that they had. I mean, Survivors had pretty strong positioning there all around. And interestingly, we are seeing a 2-2 setup again from these Survivors, probably due to the fact that they don't have the Silence Doozies available in that safe room, though. Exactly, yeah, the Silence Doozies, because of those Ace Mod changes, are definitely like lightning guns, I believe the term was used, because of their lack of reload speed and the spread was tightened a little bit. I don't believe a whole lot has changed since Ace Mod V4 attempted to make Left 4 Dead 2 great again, according to the slogan on Left 4 Dead Nation. So we'll see exactly how these teams decide to play it in terms of that setup. Because four Uzis, as we saw last chapter, can do a lot of damage to a tank in a very short amount of time. And of course, in competitive Left 4 Dead 2, you want to have those tanks be the centerpiece of both the Survivor and Infected gameplay. And you know what? I think they're actually moving to shop for that Suzy right now, and they are going to find it. Indeed they shall. The gazebo gives, and the gazebo takes away, but right now it's <laughs> giving them a silence Suzy. Indeed it is. And let's see, did they go for it? No, now, now they're 3-1, so this is the more quote-unquote traditional setup that you're used to seeing, as you mentioned, that I believe they ran in the last chapter. We do have the baiting timer coming out here. It's a Smoker, yeah, Hunter, Charger, and a Spitter, so another pretty good hit. But this is some pretty slow play from Team Daddy right here. Typically, with the players that they have on their roster, you like to see them play fast pace. But instead, they are going slowly. That Hunter gets melted. Charger gets obliterated. And then where's that Smoker and Spitter at? They have nothing they can do. They're going to get pushed right now a little bit. And they're just going to be forced to retreat piece. And that was a great survivor play. Yeah, definitely so. I'm kind of surprised, honestly, that Aphelion didn't trigger their hit 
any time before then either. They didn't exactly pick a huge choke point to use that hit on, so I feel like maybe using a little sooner could have been good. It's just really interesting amounts of baits and hesitation or, or picking these attacks that we're seeing from both teams here. We and here comes control. the witch pull. Oh, let's see, they actually are saying the hit as well. That jockey is going to get cleared. Smoker gets shut down, and the witch is only just making her way through the path right now. Going to be taken out almost before even getting to the shotgun. Everything shut down once again. And Pisa, I agree with you. I think they've, they've elected to use their hits at times they thought would have been best. But from the way I'm seeing it go right now, I think Team Daddy Survivor is like a step in front of their infected. Maybe like half a step, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you there. I mean, look at that. They even tried to send the hunter in at last second to get something while the witch was distracting them, and they got nothing. They've just it's, gotten delayed. They didn't start the horde. <laughs> they oh, moved wow. back before they started the horde. They had to move a little bit further forward, so that's going to give another hit to... And as we said that, because of that little positioning error, this is going to give probably the best amount of time for Team Aphelion to know what they want to do with this hit. And indeed, they're going to send it now. Jockey manages to land. Here's a separation cap. Smoker's going to land from oh that. Jockey gosh. still is not clear. This is exactly what Team Daddy did not want. Now the event has been triggered, but that was a whole bunch of unnecessary damage there, Pisa, and it put the ball kind of in Aphelion's court. Definitely so. I wonder if that little uh, MM1 is all it takes to... Uh affect Team Daddy's Calm there. I don't know. Maybe there's a world where they were just trying to bait them by going back without starting the event, but uh, didn't work. Didn't happen here. And wow, great capitalization, great separation by Team Aphelion. Next set's going to be coming in soon as these survivors finally sort of getting themselves situated in this back corner. Yeah, now this is interesting because they can take it either in that back corner or they could have spread out to the other side, but they have all the infected coming at them from one direction, everything getting shut down simultaneously except for that charger, getting a single punch onto Bravo. That looked dangerous. If those penners had landed right there, that would have been huge, but the hunter was dead as it hit the ground. Spit spread did not land, and the jockey got shut down as well. Yeah, definitely so. That's very quick shutdowns. I mean, when you have that kind of aim, that ability to just tap those minor SI down on your team, you can use all sorts of different positioning that's maybe not available at different levels, and this seems to be that kind of a strat. I mean, they were split up 2-2 between those barriers, but didn't bother them at all. I mean, the Charger managed to get a punch, but everything else just disappeared. Didn't matter. Here comes the next hit. Pounce is gonna land. Rochelle's getting boomed. That's a 2-cap up there right now. The final SI was shut down, but that's, uh, again, a pretty sizable, a fair amount of damage to be getting out of a little hit like that with no charge split. Exactly, yeah, and that was actually Reloading close to here. being even worse than that, because that jockey, I think, was going after a hib in the corner, but I think Reloading. he got the M2. Like, if that jockey had landed with that hunter and then the smoker had an opportunity to cover while a boom was out, that would have been even worse. Right, but this is a strategy that I do kind of like, where it forces the survivors to shut things shut down, and at this level that we're talking about in the semifinals between these players who have been around forever, that's the strat you can execute. That being said, there is still a margin for error, as we almost saw right there. They only have to deal with one more hit, I'm pretty sure. Jockey manages to land. This is kind of the error I was talking about. There's the double boom. Charter is going to get cleared, though, as it charged in the corner and got stuck on the lip of the bridge piece, and they knew exactly what they were doing. Charger can't land there. <laughs> Indeed they did. Look at map knowledge there. But uh, again, this is damage, nothing to shake a stick at. We've actually seen Sam uh, take pills right there. I guess the event is just about over right now, so they will be moving forward. But we will have some bleed out on Sam as he needs that speed in order to start moving through this next area. Right, so they have one survivor in bleed. They do have four sets of pills. Pretty even distribution of the damage spread. And this is all... Free tank. So right now, Team Daddy really doesn't want to deal with a rock tank. There's going to be a smoke game kick. Nice speed going out. Charger lands, and the boomer didn't go in. Everything was cleared almost instantaneously. Single boom goes out as well, and this tank should be up in the next couple of steps. Now, PCM, this is a rock tank area per se, but if the survivors take advantage of the way the map is, they could definitely LOS them to a commit. Yeah, I'm, I haven't seen a whole lot of tank play, honestly, uh, on this map since the changes to the event. But I, I imagine, I mean, there's potential for the survivors to use their high health and go into a position where they chip him instead of LOS him. Or there's definitely a couple good LOS spots that are available as well. I think it's going to be pretty interesting seeing where they set up. Yep, okay. We've seen this out of a, a Bravo team before, is using those 
using those little porta potties to try to get some height and some chip onto the tank. Looks like it's not really happening anymore. They've decided to switch to LOS. Tank is finally getting LOS. That next hit going in. Smoker and Hunter popped so fast, and Jockey, wow, actually gonna latch onto Hib right there, but that tank down to 50% rage on his first pass, and it doesn't look like he's getting much else. He's not, and you know what, the survivors are running for Susie's at this point. Obviously, they don't really have a reason to take a shotgun in this area, as long as they can skeet the rocks as they're going in with their Uzis, it won't matter, but it looks as though... Bravo going for a little bit of chip right here with those Susies from a distance, and it'll be interesting to see how aggressive they play it, because I think they're inching towards that button, they've already hit it, and then they could push inside, maybe even push past. Tank is in the hands of Salty, aka Donny right now, and he's keeping sight from a distance, that's, a, that's the 1% range. And I guess the theory here from what Bravo is doing that since that tank is that far back and they hit stuff they don't want to LOS, they might as well get as much chip as they can. They have infinite ammo on the top of that gas thing too. And it's kind of a waiting game right now because this next hit wants to go in, but they haven't quite decided where they want to spawn from. Now they have a couple spawns. There's a full going out, getting cleared. Hunter lands, gets cleared. Charger misses, and now I expect Daddy to LOS. Reload. Yeah, definitely so. You don't want to go too far into LOS spots. Wall hits are up, otherwise you give away too many spawns. You gotta focus on more on being able to clear the SI that are going to come in rather than trying to avoid the tank at all costs. And as such, they have quickly turned this tank into second pass, and I guess they're gonna set up again in the exact same position. Salty, unable to find a rock with that really just one chance he had to land one with that SI attack. And he's only gonna have one more chance, otherwise they're gonna have to make a commit with this tank. Yeah, and this is a really, really good position, in my opinion, for the survivors to be in. They're trying to proxy block and or stare at all of those spawns for that boomer that they could, but Donne on second pass right here, and he's pretty far out. He's losing sight right now, though. Boomer gets a single boom, and this could trigger some kind of commit. He's still losing sight. He's down to 20%, 15, Oh, no, he's 10, losing it. Five, he's AI, and... he's AI. Oh, boy. I think he may have crashed. Oh, man. It looked like, I was wondering if they were just, like, planning on holding it there, holding sight, while they cycled some spawns to get this SI that they wanted to go in with, but, uh, yeah, then he just continued to not move until <laughs> he ran out of rage right there, so maybe, maybe he's crashed, maybe he's salty, I don't know. Maybe he's salty about it, yeah, that's true, I mean, that single boom did land in, that's a pretty unfortunate turn of events for Donne, and now unfortunately the tank is a bot, so we'll see what the teams decide to do. I don't know if Team Ophelion is going to ask for some kind of potential, or like, do you want to have some kind of fix for it? Like, And now he actually does time out. I saw him type pause there, but obviously not a good position for the special infected to be in. Let I, I'm going to let the team see what they want to do first, and now Sam's saying BRB, he's going to fix something. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it's just unfortunate timing, I would say, right there. Kill your tank and we'll wait for your four spawn. <laughs> oh, like, oh my god, is he serious? <laughs> Him saying, that, that's a great that's a great suggestion right there. Now, of course, this pause is giving a chance for the teams, who are all definitely friends, just to, to share some, some kind words with each other. Yeah, definitely so. Never, Hib will never miss an opportunity to provide some sort of a mutually uh, agreeable solution to a problem. Yeah, exactly. Mutually agreeable solution. That's exactly what we're looking for. And I'm being informed right now that I don't believe there'll be a restart. Under Article 4 or Section 5, I think that qualifies this shit talk. <laughs> Uh-oh. I didn't know Fig was in here. Fig is actually just ghosting as Sam, a.k.a. Red Start, right now. And, I mean, yeah, that's that's just unfortunate timing, I'd say. The rest, the rest of the map was getting played out and I I mean he stood there for how long do you think like five seconds or something like that yeah 50 percent rage yeah well, I don't know I mean he could have had sight before that he could have been gone for like forever man I don't know he could have been gone for up to 10 seconds yeah he lost 50 percent not moving his mouse or keyboard I was first person oh well good I choosing the interesting cameras where the action will happen thank you Dawkins Oh, to please! Oh, now, now there's love going out from both the sides, and I, I think it, I think it actually was that much. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I kind of thought too. Like originally, that's what he was doing before. Like he was LSing, and I thought he was going to like send them a like 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 another hit or something like that. But instead, he just didn't move. And then when he started dropping rage, I was like, are they intentionally botting this, or exactly what are they doing? But instead, 
we are going to have a bot tank going in with two support right here, and I believe that's going to be the decision that holds, at least from what I'm hearing. Yes, put pressure on the survivors. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for reminding me of the chat messages that I've seen probably 8 million times at this point from playing this game. Sorry, I have bull blood also coming out from Hoka. So yeah, it wouldn't be Left 4 Dead without a pause here, Pizza, and that lasts for an extended amount of time, but Donna is back online. Yeah, definitely would not be. You know, and we're going to be doing five maps, so there's plenty of opportunities for the rest of the players to crash and uh, more pauses to occur, which we will fill with hilarious banter, as you've seen such an example of just now. Yeah, and in case it's unclear, I am also communicating with the other admins here, and it's, you don't really restart because of a crash tank. Like, that's something where... That, that's one of those unfortunate things. I actually, I'm trying to remember exactly what game it was. I want to say it was from RBT3, but there was a case where Miro, who obviously isn't on this team, but is associated with people who are on Team Aphelion, he, he got his tank accidentally stuck because of the game in, like, the ceiling of the, like, or actually the underside of the bridge, rather, on Parish Map 3. And when he got it caught there, you know, it was it was technically the game just being the game, and sometimes Left 4 Dead is that way, and obviously this is an issue with either on Donny's side. It really isn't the game's fault, but... It's pretty much just one of those things that you file under. Left 4 Dead 2 is awful sometimes, slash internets and technology don't always work the way you're supposed to, and it's just one of those unfortunate circumstances. So, I mean... Yeah, this isn't the kind of thing that you have a rule for in most games. Like, most most games, most tournaments nowadays, you don't really have a rule for stuff like this, because this doesn't happen in most games. Um, but anyway, it happens in Left 4 Dead. So we have gotten Dan back into the server... And uh, he has fully loaded. I wonder what these teams are going to do to try to figure out any sort of a way to deal with this. I think we're just going to have an AI tank, which honestly I feel like is not too much different than a regular tank in this situation. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's, they've already cleared out the boom. Okay, let's so let's assume they were going to commit with the boom. Does that sound like what they were going to do to you, Rails, or do you think they were going to like wait for that extra SI before committing? I don't know. I don't know much about the, the strategy these teams are But basically the options are, they were sacking, they were going to say one boom's not enough, not commit with it, and then they're going to go in with a tank, no comments, and three SI. Yeah. Oh, never mind. We are live now, though, so forget about all that theory crafting. We're going to see what goes on. Salty is dead. Tank is coming in. He does have just a couple residual comments, which are pretty much going to be taken out. Well, that rock almost landed though, because it went like through the center. But this is oh, wow. this is a dead tank. Like they have four Suzies, it's a bot, and it's dead. That's how fast a tank can get melted in that area either way. But when it's just a bot with two support, that's unfortunate right there. And let's see if we're gonna get another. Actually, it looks as though Donna is stuck now as well. Donna just not just not getting the benefit right now of of this game. And Ota does go in and die, so we'll have another pause going out. But this is this has not put a good taste in Team Aphelion's mouth. Definitely not. Uh, yeah, this is not the start that they are looking for right here. Maybe they should have uh, should have tried to get two games being played to <laughs> try to try to make up for some of these unfortunate circumstances. Yeah, Dan holding on to that boomer. He's stuck in the back right now. We just had that hunter die in the front. And uh... oh, here we go. Here's the juiciness. We wouldn't like to go into that tank in this map. I wonder if I can spawn a tank. Is that yeah, a thing you might as well just spawn a tank right now. I feel like that's the solution to this problem that we're all waiting for. <laughs> no, what, what I would do, what I would do is I would move the percentage down. Right? It's like, I wouldn't actually be trying to spawn a tank. I'd be trying to tell the game that the tank's in a certain point to make the game think the tank's already happened to spawn one. What? I don't know. If you had one of those, like, tank spawner plugins or whatever, you could definitely do it. But I don't think most servers put them on there because they don't want people abusing admin and trolling pugs. Oh, you both get two tanks and we pick the best one. It's not a bad solution. You can't spawn it, trust me. Okay. I right, hear. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can put myself over here and that. We are back live again, 
And he says, let's try. No, uh, that's not gonna work. Well, if we can't spawn tanks, then I guess the, the result is kind of stands, right? You'd have to, like, SV cheats. No, oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. There's, there's nothing else we can do reloading. here, so we're either restarting the round or uh, that's it. And reloading. we're gonna see reloading. Daddy take maybe one more hit before they hit that safe room. That freeway looks like it heads to the bridge. Alright, then, let's follow it. Hey, I'm reloading. But, uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, everyone's trying to figure out. How we're gonna make another tank spawn? Uh, don't think it's gonna happen. Ophelion's SI kind of looking like it's kind of all over the place. Reloading. Don't know if they're actually gonna hit or if they're just gonna let Daddy uh, hit the safe room up here. Kind of looks like maybe they're just gonna go for the safe room. Smoker going in the safe room. Survivor's going in the safe room. Good rounds. <laughs> in fact, they go in the safe room. Survivor's going in the safe room. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty big amount of damage. Now there is one other option here. What is that? That we delete our sounds? Well, so assuming that round is exactly what it's going to be like, that's a 1912 total score for Team Daddy, which is pretty huge. I mean, their bonus for that round was 700, which is uh, two thirds, essentially, of the maximum bonus possible. Uh, actually, more like. Ooh. More like just straight up 70% practically. But um, yeah, that is pretty big. And I feel like they probably, I mean that tank can't do a huge amount, but they would have gotten some damage on that tank, right? Like you can't kill the tank instantly and not get hurt by any SI at all. So I don't know. They'd have to play like extremely perfectly to avoid taking damage. That being said, you know, the way they played that round, I don't think it would have made the hugest of differences. How about you guys get no tank since we didn't have one? Supra trying to figure out solutions to his problems. I'm just putting numbers in chat. <laughs> yeah, there we go. One, two, three, four. Can Twitch chat count to ten? No, but Love for Dead 2 can count to four. Reloading. <laughs> We probably should have things to like spawn tanks. Bradman's in this game, but the problem is if you have tools to spawn tanks, you also have tools to like spawn hordes and commons and stuff. And you don't really want to have those available at all during a match. I mean, because then it's just like, oh hey, why did this horde spawn? There were extra commons here. Did an admin mess with it? Is the right, admin yeah. biased? And it's like, that's, I mean, that's pretty easy. That's like, if you're a server admin that wants to like win games by running your own server in like public games that's like the number one thing you can do without getting caught right it's just like spawn more commons spawn more commons spawn more hordes and so it would be pretty easy for someone to like get away with that if we had those tools available so kind of glad we don't but at the same time it would be really handy to be able to just spawn a tank when things like this go wrong because, I don't know, tanks are kind of the big thing to go wrong in this game. With people crashing or something getting stuck or something getting lit on fire. or <laughs> there's, been a, there's been a history of tank shenanigans going on. Yeah. Maybe, if, you know, if they paused it a little bit sooner, they might have been able to, like, keep, keep him in the slot somehow. And not have the tank go AI, but... As it stands... We're a little effed. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like you either need to restart the map. According to my attorney, the fig, fig, the rules don't have anything explicit about this, so it's on the admin decision. Well, wow, where are we gonna find an admin for this cup to make a decision? That sounds pretty difficult. Shall I dial the hotline?
LPD2 cups are starting to be annoying to play, says Hota. Really? Just starting for you, huh? Hmm. Rule something and let's get on with it, please. That's not how logic works, Sam. Okay, okay. Basic logic lesson for you guys. Have you heard of confirming the antecedent? I think that's what it's called. He says, isn't there something about if both teams agree, then it can be restarted? Both teams do not agree. It cannot be restarted. No, no. It's, that means that's, like, if I say, if you are, hold on. Let me think about this. What's a better example? If you are a jockey, you are a special infected. You are not a jockey. Therefore, you are not a special infected. That's not true, because you could be plenty of things other than a jockey and still be a special infected. Similarly, there's other ways that the round could be restarted without both teams agreeing to it. It's just simply a, a possible condition that creates the effect of the round being restarted. Instead, let's see. Oh, we do have an official admin ruling from Prodigy who says the game will proceed forward as is. No restart. Ah, so Ophelion's decided that the admin's a pub and they're going to call Trump. <laughs> yes, that, that seems to be the right thing to do at this point. So, hopefully, we will be seeing this game go live fairly soon. Uh, Aphelion on Survivor, then. They have a lot of points to, uh, to aim for this round. As their opponents did walk in with, once again, a 700 bonus for the round. Out of a possible, what is it, 1,060? 1,060 points possible? Yeah. Uh, we'll have to see what they can do right here. Maybe... It is entirely possible that Team Daddy's not going to land their SI, and Aphelion's got some better strats for this, but uh, we'll have to see. Indeed we shall. So we are live right here. We did to see Left 4 Dead 2 have its classic appearance of influencing the game in some way, shape, or form, or technically also Donne's internet. So we will see if Team Aphelion has the wherewithal to put that behind them and match that score that we saw Team Aphelion make, or even get close to that score to put them in position to keep this game close going into maps 3, 4, and 5. There's still three maps left to play. If they score like a thousand points or over, they are still right in the thick of it. And that tank can be shut down by the survivors. Charge going in, manning the land onto Rochelle right there with a stick going down on top of that as well. Hunter is actually going to pounce and give Rochelle a nice amount of god frames right there. Jockey going in, not going to land, and that was a bit better of an attack that we saw come out from Team Daddy than we saw Team Aphelion, but it could have been a lot worse. Definitely so. I think you commented about the pounce going down, giving some god frames. I think there is a timing though at which like the god frames don't matter as much as the fact that you kept the survivor in the spit longer and didn't let them walk right out. And since Rochelle was kind of on the edge of that spit, I think it was a good choice for him to get the pounce in there because she would have walked out of that incredibly quickly if uh, if he did not go for that pounce right there. So. Pretty standard stuff right there. All stack on the one guy who's available to be hit. Uh, that was a nice opening charge. And here comes the next hit. Survivors haven't made it over to the um, silenced Uzis quite yet. And all of the SI coming from front right there. Bullet's gonna land. Gonna get cleared pretty quickly. They do get the charge. Do they get the spit as well? Team Daddy, two for two on charge spits right now. Yeah, that's just unfortunate, I would say for Team of Aphelion, because they had everything coming from the same direction that they could have shut down, and they managed to get two of the shutdowns instead of the full three cappers dying, and the Charger was one that was up, managed to land that last spawn. That's one that really counted, I would say. The Witch is going to be up right here as well. Let's see what Team Aphelion does with it. Hunter is pre-spawned as well. It looks like the Rochelle does see that, and... Yep. I Maybe think now, nice, 
Nice, nice, nice kill by Coach. Yeah, he managed to get that one hit. Double boom does go as well. Jockey and a smoker are the last two up. And I want to see how Team Aphelion plays this in terms of where they hold the event. It should be around the same spot, but they might not go underneath the awning there. They might choose something different, which is going to get drawn right now. Jumping over the fence. There's oh, a separation no. pull onto Rochelle. That would be super, which is going in and is not going to get anywhere near him before being taken out. Yeah, nice moves by Aphelion. Managed to get that smoker clear and kill the witch off before it was anywhere close starting Supra. Now one thing I do notice is Aphelion did not actually check the gazebo properly. They have one unsilenced Uzi along with three chrome shotguns right now. So this is kind of an interesting uh, weapon loadout for them and it doesn't look like they're planning on going back to the gazebo at any point in time. Slightly different positioning here. We do have a single boom going out onto Ellis. Pounce is going to come in. Going to get skeeted. Charge is going to land. Once again charge and spit landing by Team Daddy right here. I don't know, maybe that's the lower pings or, or what, I'm not quite sure, but they are doing a great job uh, getting those charge spits over and over again. Yeah, this is kind of the inverse of what we saw from the last half, because on the first half, we saw the survivors and their momentum really keeping them a step in front of the infected. And right now, I think the infected's hits are coordinated enough, and they have the survivors' momentum figured out enough to where they're hitting almost at the exact right time. Like, both of those hits that we saw, even when they were coming from worse spots in the last hit where they landed the charge spit, that was not good for the survivors whatsoever in terms of shutting that down. It's been good coordination from Daddy so far. Nice Hunter landing right there, and we are going to have a Jockey going down as well. Spit is not really going to land on much of anything. Smoker does get cleared, and of course that could be reactionary to the decision going out in the last half, but I would also like to say it's one of those situations now where it's like this is a true test where it was something that not the other team did, it's not something that the admins did, something that the game and the internet like pretty much had happened to them. So now Kenneth Gillion kind of shrugged that off, and they just play the way they know they can play. They've obviously all been around for quite a long time in terms of this community. Can they now have the metal to continue that kind of success? Charger is going to land on a survivor on the corner. Managed to get a pound as well. A little bit of a separation going out there. Don, I thought that he could juke that Charger. Obviously was not able to. Hunter lands onto him as well with a spit going down. The spit is going to miss coach, and this is pretty good damage pre-tank, I would say. Yeah, this is looking pretty ridiculous, and even the, if they didn't get the charge spit on that one, that charge was just a huge amount of damage on its own. Uh, that being said, I mean, if they get through the rest of this event, they've really just got the tank in the open area left, and they're sitting at a 653 bonus, so they are already below Daddy's score at this point for the round, but they're still in this game by a long shot. Uh, they are not anywhere close to being at a big score deficit, but there is a two cap happening. Charger gonna miss, gets his one punch though. But wow, look at the health just across the board, even without looking at the numbers. We've got Dan, Salty, Slow. We've got Aphelion, Hota, bleeding out. We've got Super just on the edge of going slow. He's actually at 42 right now, and they're gonna have to sit around and get bled by this tank. Exactly, and this tank is up in the hands of Sam14 Daddy. We haven't been there in a while. Let's see how Team Daddy is doing and hop it right over to their worm for this tank. Reload. Reloading! Ready. I got a boomer. No, not yet. Don't hit yet. Don't hit yet. I'll tell you when to hit. I'll tell you when to hit. If you see the boom, take it. Nice. Don't hit yet. Don't hit yet. Okay, hit now. Let's go. Let's go. Sorry. I'm holding train here. He's trying to get the left guy. Shoot it! Shoot it! Reload! Everybody grab a weapon! Shouldn't do that when there's no spot left! Reloading! They're going for it. Okay, hit. Not hit. ready. I'm going in, I'm going in. Okay. We gotta help him early. Like now, 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 now. A lot of damage. Got it. Yeah. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. That was the tank in the hands of Sam for Team Daddy, doing a good amount of work right there. He was down to 4K pretty much as he was working his way in, but that support went in and was able to get 
a couple of pins for him to work off of in that alleyway area. Obviously, no boomer landing, but the synchronization from the special infection so far from Team Daddy this round has been quite Just good, run. coupled with a little bit of the momentum Ooh. shifting Hello. from Ball Team right. Aphelion. I would say that they've done a very good job at putting themselves probably going to be up by... I'd wager between seven, maybe like five and seven hundred points, depending on how these other hits go. Yeah, definitely seems to be the case. I really love the positioning of their tank there. I mean, they, he took a lot of chip just to get into that position, but at the same time, they had the survivors pushed back into a corner. The tank was able to go in instantly instead of having to, you know, walk across the entire map to get there. And uh, as a result, great caps, great damage going on. Aphelion's still moving, though. They're down to about a 227 bonus. And here comes the next hit. We've got Charge from the back. Gonna win right there. Smoker's gonna get taken down. Jockey gets cleared fairly quickly, and Spit is actually not even gonna separate Hota. He is slow in the back, though, and had to take a little bit of a detour there. Yeah, I mean, so that Charter didn't land. That probably... Actually, I would say there's been more charters that have landed on a couple of these hits really like to ever see from yet. a survivor side perspective. Like but as long as they don't eat another one here or some kind of multi-cap, they should be able to make it in the safe room. They still have an okay amount of bonus as well. And as long as they shut down this hit, they should be good. Boomer gets popped and shut down. Charger going in and not going to land. But you do have a smoker pole trying to go out, but he's getting kited around by Nick, who is also going to cut that tongue. Hota doing work right there onto that smoker. And yeah, all things considered, it's going to be about a 600-point lead, I would say, for Team Daddy going to map three. That's definitely recoverable with three Three maps still left to go. Obviously, not the ideal situation for Team Aphelion, but they made the best that they possibly could, I guess I would say, out of it. And now it's like, what, 500 points this chapter just under? So we'll see how they're able to rebound now in terms of map 3, 4, and 5, as hopefully knocking on the wood of my desk right here, there's no other interesting technical glitches that Left 4 Dead 2 still, after all these tens of thousands of hours, can surprise us all with. Indeedly weedily. And yeah, nineteen twelve to thirteen twenty is the score going to map three. And we are doing through map five today, guys. So there are plenty of opportunities for this score to turn around. Hopefully Dan won't lag out again on any of these other maps. But uh we'll have to see. It's definitely been a strong showing from Daddy today. And oh I feel my like a god. The tank is at ninety percent. What? I have never seen that. Where when does that even spawn? That <laughs> that's like like right before the safe room area. Ninety percent. Wow. wow. I think I have I have seen them fairly late before. I don't know if I've ever seen ninety, but I feel like I've seen upper eighties on this map, and it's definitely an interesting tank fight. Um, I mean, there's a car near that end safe room, and that can be put into play when the tank is that late. There's. There's a lot of things, uh, I mean, plus you're basically fighting in the graveyard area, the cemetery, with, you know, all the spawns around that come along with that, great places to get cornered, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, and this is how much damage can go out onto the survivors beforehand to make that tank almost a non-issue, that's the other question, where if they're too weak by the time they get to that point, then that could almost be an easy wipe for both sides, but if your team of Filion... Playing from behind, this is going to be a tough task. It is Parish Map 3. I've seen teams hold bonuses that have been great going through this, and also it has a high susceptibility to getting damage from a lot of hits beforehand. If they can find a way to do good damage on to Team Daddy, and then they can somehow maintain their bonus like that, those hits before the tank are going to be crucial for them to deal with because they're playing from behind at this point. They could even take the lead on this depending on how they do in terms of their survivor play beforehand. First, they need to crack Team Daddy Survivor. You have a pull going out, pounce landing as well, pull into a pounce spit with a boom on top of that, with a nice stumble onto Bravo as well. Pretty good start. Definitely is getting this nice spit, spit damage here. here. Finally, Team Aphelion actually managing to get some good spit damage on one of their hits. And uh, it looks like they're Reloading keeping it together, here. at least for the SI so far. Reloading. Yeah, and at this point, I think they can probably bring that coordination a little bit back to center, you know? Bring in, okay, we had the situation happen last chapter, but now we still have a chance to win this game. It's by no means over, especially with the quality of players that they've got on that team. It's an even server. It would be a tall task, but they can definitely do it. Nice try boom going out right there as well. Ella separated up top. Hunter going in, trying to get the separation hit onto him. Maggie land onto the green guy with a stick going down. Jockey's going to go in and manages to not land onto Sam. Close to it, and then an M2 going out from Rochelle. But off those two star Starting two twos, they've done a good amount of damage on the team daddy. 
Yeah, definitely so. Getting an average of, what, like 20-some damage Reloading. per hit Reloading. is uh, pretty good at this level of play, I'd have to say. I guess they they found their scapegoat, and they Reloading. can sort of focus their anger on that and get back to playing the game. Exactly, and we do see a little bit of separation going out right here. Boomer's going to spawn. Imagine to get a nice single boom. Spitter, Charger, and a Smoker. I think they are probably going to save it for that room. Either that or they're going to prove me completely wrong and rock it off the top of that house. Yeah, that's what they're going to do instead. The survivors haven't made a whole lot of good progress, I would say. They've been getting boomed very frequently. And there's a charge going in. Not going to land. He got the punch on the pull target. And that's going to be even more damage onto him. These hits are not getting shut down whatsoever so far. They're managing to either land their pinners, get scratch damage, and they're landing booms consistently. Yeah, definitely so. They're... In addition to that, I mean, just the speed of these hits. They got, what, what, three hits in a fairly close area. Now Aphelion, or now Daddy's moving a little bit quicker right here. Gonna deny a fourth hit before they get out to the open area. But very quick hits with very consistent damage off of each of them. Now we have a 2-2 setup for them, though. Uh, this isn't a terrible spot to have a 2-2 with that witch. There's a double boom going in right now. I didn't see who the witch triggered on. Oh, exactly. she out. Oh, he's a glitch it. Left for Dead 2, I love you, you are an outstanding game. The witches decide to run away and have absolutely none of that. And now, that's another situation where it's, again, not the survivor's fault, really. They shot her to draw her up a hole, and the witch just found absolutely no path to go towards. She could have gone around the stairs, but instead she was just out of range for that situation. Now, the funny part is, if the other team does that, at this point, we can tell who Karma is on the side of for some reason, right? And at this point... If the other team tried to do that, the witch would probably like bunny hop up on top of the furniture and like fly into someone's face and kill them with an instant swipe. I'm probably not saying so. that's gonna happen, but I'm saying it's a possibility. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of wonder if that's. Uh, I think Hib was the one who pulled that witch. I think that might have been some Hib magic right there. Not quite sure if it's if it's luck or skill. It was uh, Bravo actually. Ironically was it Bravo? Enough. Wow. Let's see. They free spawned a charger down below. They have a jockey spitter and a smoker for the rest. And I'll be curious to see exactly, from the survivor side, how Team Daddy decides to play. Because they're going to drop one survivor down, and there's the charge landing onto him. Spitz is going to go in on a two survivor. Doggy's going to land for a stumble as well. That's a good amount of damage, bleeding the health off of Coach and Rochelle right there. That is actually going to force him into slow for a second. There is still a smoker up and a spitter running around up top. And this is pretty good, because right now, if your team... Aphelion, you can say we can do better than that. And actually, they're uh, split right now. There's two survivors down below, two up top. However, Team Aphelion do not have the spawns to capitalize. And you know what? They're shooting every single alarm card, and they're going to hold it out. Yeah, they, they shot one of the alarm cards, clearing that spitter up top. And now they have to wait out this horde right here. Him is already bleeding, too. He took pills. And so there's definitely opportunity to take a bit more damage here for Team Daddy. Honestly, like, this area, I've seen this happen before. There was actually a tank in this area. I want to say it was AST2, and that was actually during a grand finals match, if I remember correctly. It was Team Not Even Trying versus Serious Business in that match, and typically you don't see a survivor team even use this area a whole lot, like, back near that white truck. Careful. And actually, now they're going to be Careful. pushing up to the left because it's not the best area to be in. Nice tongue cut right there by Coach. Charger is going to whip. Smoker pull does go out. Rochelle's very separated right now. Bravo getting drawn back to that car. Smoker is going to keep constricting as the spinner's getting scratches. And that's going to be a down oh almost on the... Actually, it is a down on the Bravo. Just ridiculous levels of damage right here. If they can find a way to play this final tank as a bleed tank, it's almost certainly going to be a wipe at this point. I mean, they, it's only two of the players bleeding, but to imagine that, you know, purple's not going into going to go into bleed before this tank spawns is almost unfathomable. Here comes a boom from the blow. Gonna get pop. Jockey having to gutter away. And I think now they might save the rest of the hit for the drop if that jockey gets a despawn, because they should have a spitter coming into the spawn queue. And, I mean, okay, the survivors are in the position where they have two bleeding, they have three sets of pills left, though, and they might be able to find another one down below somewhere in the graveyard. They have dropped into common right here, and there's going to be a jockey lane, does get cleared, Hunter takes the pin, Spick goes down, him is going to get stacked right now by the SI, and that is going to be a down. My word, yeah, what timing, especially on that charge right at there at the end, like as quick as possible. You, you really have to time that charge well, because if you charge just as 
like half a second too early, you're not going to hit him. He's going to be god framed. If you charge half a second too late, he's managed to move out of a way the two feet necessary to make your charge just stumble him instead. So, uh, great work right there chaining those caps inside that spit. And here comes the tank now in the hands of Thug Life. Already going for a rock rate. You're going to take a good amount of chip from that, though. 500 chip. And the survivor's probably going to have to get pretty aggressive right now. Meanwhile, Hib is sitting in the back. Oh, trying to 1v1 a jockey. Would be huge. Oh. Imagine you get the kill. If that had been like a hunter, then he would have had to Uzi speed that instead. And as you said, PSM, the survivors are getting quite aggressive. Thug Life being forced back to the street. He's LS himself. He does have a car to play with. Knocking it to the left hand side. And this is a this is a tank fight that you don't see happen too often, which is what I kind of love in matches like this. It forces both the teams to react and kind of be on their toes. Oh, and this is going to be interesting now because the survivors have seen that car is out of the way. There is one survivor still split, and if this tank isn't careful, they're going to run to the safe room, but there's going to be a nice double boom going out. This is going to trigger the commit from Thug Life going in. He's got his car right in the center of his car, so he's going for the punches instead. Then you get a punch on the coach and on the Alex, he's them back and forth. The Hunter pin has landed as well. Nobody's cleared it yet. That smoker's trying to get a pull. Hunter's still going in. Tank has just about 3k HP left. That's going to be three end caps going out. Last survivor is coach. And that is the light coming out from Team Aphelion, exactly what they needed. That was incredible, and like you said, exactly what they needed. The survivors got split up. I don't know why Rochelle was so far in the back, but that car split them up. Beautiful two boom, and then that was about it. They managed to get the caps on the non boom survivors, and Tank had such an easy time just beating the hell out of the survivors that were surrounded by commons right there. And, and this uh, is like, that's how you like, play that. Exactly, and they had got the damage on them beforehand, right, which forced them into that kind of aggressive style. Mm -hmm. They knew they couldn't play a bleed-out tank on Survivor, and that forced them to make that call to the street area. Nobody was watching that boom respawn, right? The tank had the car right at the gate there of the fence and was kind of sitting behind, and everyone was going for chip. Boomer spawned up behind one of the spawns in that area, and nobody popped it. Like, all their guns were in the opposite direction. They got two booms separated, and that is a absolute disaster situation for the survivors and thug life also also made the absolute correct call in abandoning that car for a second and just deciding to punch the boom survivors instead it was picture perfect from team Aphelion, and now they have a chance to negate everything that's happened in this game so far as long as they don't take a lot of damage as i said between here and where that tank spawns indeed and who was that boomer did you did anyone catch who that was i think it was maybe dan but i don't really remember it definitely wasn't thug life who had the Boom, I want to say, yeah, Thug Life was the tank, obviously, and then I'm not exactly sure who it was, to be to be honest, but, like... That, that might be MVP of that tank fight, to be honest. Like, yeah, it was. That just made everything so easy for all of the rest of the SI in the tank, just to get that two boom right there. Yeah, there, there's a point too where the where the engaging talk between both the teams is is it's 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 good to a point, right? But then in a situation like this where you know it's probably not warranted, eh, that's when the admins can start gagging people. What implying that it was warranted in the rounds before where they were talking about how the admin was a pub? Well, see, beforehand at least they were attempting to have some kind of content of the conversation, right? They were calling him they, they were calling one of the admins a pub, which of course they should not be doing, right? And that's in direct violation of the rules, by the way. But when they're yelling at each other, it's a little bit different. In that in that scenario, it kind of forced people to be. And I'm not defending it, right? Right? As, as if the one that's the other thing. As if the one quote unquote pub admin made the decision alone, where it's like if you're a hot mess admin, you probably shouldn't be saying that in a in a dreamcasted match, let alone the semifinals of a tournament that you're supposed to be like the standard bearer for in terms of being an admin. That's called the hot mess tournament. So I mean, that might have some ramifications. Who knows? I can't I can't say because I'm not part of the admin team actually at hot mess. I'm just one of the tournament admins. But, you know, and then, yeah, probably you can solve the Magic 8-Ball and that kind of stuff. My point is, when they're going back and forth with each other, and they're kind of, like, adding these stupid little snippy comments where everybody in this game knows that shit-talking, for better or for worse, has been one of the foundational elements of Left 4 Dead 2 in a game like this and that we're at, like, that's kind of how they communicate with each other sometimes. Even even when they're, like, not doing it in a way that's antagonistic, you know what I mean? So, uh, my, 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 it, it crosses the line, then, when they start instigating stuff where there is no instigation. Everybody was just reacting at that point to that tank scenario. So, at this point now, it's like, okay, it's been a map and a half. Please just shut up. That's that's pretty much the sentiment. And with that, we are going to be going live, because Salty's back in the game. Indeed he is. 
Team Ophelion gonna take their survivor side here. Let's see if they can take a little bit less chip than Team Daddy did during that round. That's really the key, because if they get forced into a bleeding scenario again, then they might have to make the same exact call. We have two survivors outside, two survivors inside. Boomer dropping down. Hunter gets nicely skeeted. We do have a smoker pulling Nick right at the door to get some chip on the thug life. Comparable damage. And the thing that I was kind of surprised about last round is that the 2-2s were doing damage. I know the traditional line of thought is that 2-2s are not as good as 3-1s in those areas, but Team Aphelion made every single attack they had count, even the ones that are supposed to get shut down more easily. And we have to see if Team Daddy can do the exact same thing, because with that tank whip that we saw, the momentum could easily shift now. Indeed. I mean, even that opening hit was pretty scrappy from the SI. They got a one boom. One of the SI got shut down, but the Smoker and Spitter just went together and still made, turned it into about a 20 damage hit, uh, which is just slightly less than what Aphelion got on their opening hit, but we'll have to see. Next set coming up is a 3-1 with Boomer this time, no Charger. And Aphelion taking it, so nice boom onto the ledge right there. Gonna get a one boom. Hunter looking for the follow-up cap, not quite gonna find it. He's That's gonna a get long yeah, that pull, nobody was looking for that. Just focused so hard on the other SI. So they managed to pull out actually another 20 or so damage that off of that. Out. I get it was a smoker pull. Yes, that's yes. true, I suppose. <laughs> perfect. Just perfect. It's to the point now where the puns aren't even intentional. They just happen. Yes. That's, that's when you know it's good. So, anyway, all right, so they're which 44%. And the majority of the damage was pretty much like spread out evenly through the like each attack until they got to the impound lot and also the sewer. The sewer is one of those areas where you expect that kind of damage to happen, but any other place where they're taking unnecessary damage is just okay. not what Team Aphelion needs right now. And there's a good hit for this room in the queue already with a spitter charger and a hunter. I doubt they're gonna have that last spawn. Hunter going in, manning the land on Ellis for the stumble, but the charger is waiting, goes in and does get leveled. That was interesting, because that Charger waited for a while, piece him. Yeah, he did. It looked like he was, I mean, again, just trying to time it so you aren't getting chipped, and you're going to be able to charge as soon as he's available to get capped, but just didn't work out for him. Managing to get that level really nicely is Aphelion right there. Yeah, no, um, okay, here's the Witch that we talked about before, and they are going to try to draw her up. Boomer is going to get popped, and you know what? She is going to go up the stairs, so she is not going to glitch out, I don't think. The Jockey is still up as well. Jockey now needs to land. That's a little bit of separation damage going out, and that Witch is still going in. Ellis gets the crown, but Super is going to take a little bit of shit down. That Hunter actually just blasted onto Ellis. Did I see that correctly? That was awesome. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> like, moved him back up into the attic when he was trying to <laughs> fall down. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, that could have been a lot worse. That was really clutched by uh, Hoda to get that crown on the Witch after all the cha other chaos going around. But they still got a pretty good pull out of that. Got some good Hunter and Jockey damage as well. But they push through the sewer right here, and that's going to force the Infected to either hit from below or up top. And obviously, the choke here is not nearly as bad as it used to be. You can shoot on the ladder now. So unless someone gets, like, hitbox charge out the top of that, then they have a good chance of shutting this down. Obviously, it looks as though the survivors are expecting the hit from below. They're having Super poke his head up. It's a Jockey, Spitter, Smoker, and a Charger. And it looks as though they're getting ready to rush up. And now the spawn has come from down below. Charger is going to whip that charge. Jockey is getting M2 shut down. Smoker getting a pull in the back right there. Charger shut down. And this is great piece in, but they can actually take the impound lot right now. Yeah, definitely so. They haven't. They didn't even shoot off an alarm cord during that hit, which is uh, a drastic improvement over what we saw from last round. But yeah, overall, their health is still sitting very good. 55 is their lowest on Hota, and that's still a pretty far away away from bleed, away from slowness, and they've got bridge already. Wow, that boomer spawns up. And they get the pop on the boomer. I don't even know if you need to take that pop on. Seeing the team just ran out of that, but they've got all the momentum on their side right now, and this is going to force Team Daddy into an interesting position. I believe it's Bravo and Hib who have yet to play their tanks, and they're going to get all the ammo they could possibly want here. They have nobody bleeding and four pills. This is exactly what they need to do, PCM, and they are pulling it off so far. Yeah, it definitely is. It's, I mean, there's, what, like they're two hits left before this tank? So either Daddy is going to have to come out with hurry. some incredible tank play, like to the level that we saw from Aphelion on the last round and beyond. Or this is going to be a strong round for Aphelion. They're going to make some good points on this map, it looks like. Right, and so now, if you're facing a position like this, I know it obviously depends on what the survivors do, but if you're trying to play a rock tank in this area, I mean, 
it, it really depends if the survivors go all the way back or if they stay far. If they stay far in that same kind of area and they block those spawns, it could be really good. But then if they run back in LOS correctly, it's going to be a, a bleed-out tank against a survivor team that's taken a very small amount of damage so far. So it's kind of pick your poison. And the, I'd say the control is distinctly in Aphelion's favor right now. And they are baiting this out with their four Suzy's. One survivor is in the corner, though. He is going to be alone. He does get pounced. Donnie getting stacked on by the special infected. But again, no bleeder quite yet, aside from that one survivor who already took pills. PZM, if you're the survivors here, where do you play it? I, I, I'm i honestly not completely sure. I think I have sort of an inclination to say play it forward because Aphelion obviously is a little bit more comfortable with knowing where spawns are and such in that forward area and you don't want to end up like playing a rock tank, the other team comes up with some new spot where they can get a OS at or something like that and you just take damage over and over Bravo? again forever. Bravo's going for the car. The yeah, that's pretty Bravo. Nutty. Let's go to a Team Daddy War right now. The Citrus got shut down. Boomer gets popped. Everything annihilated. I really want to hear what they're saying. Going for it now. Probably just looking for Chip. It's on your left. Wants to hit again or save? Save. Yeah, this is good. Just right in front of the black gate. I don't think there's a way for me to get. I it. would. Yeah, I would not do that. Reloading. No, we're just gonna go on. Going okay. forward a bit. No, going back. back. Hey, I'm reloading. Reloading. Are you going for it? Going in. Okay. Did nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop, dude. What a hit of all. Yes. <laughs> you gonna be okay? Oh my goodness, we are back from that Team Daddy Worm. That was looking to be only one down, but Bravo jumping in as he was dying hit the car that he knocked in from up top to get that second in cap. That being said, though, Team of Philion, barring some catastrophe, are gonna make the safe room with bonus right here. Boomer spawns up, gets absolutely nothing. And peace him, we are about to see a big shift back in Aphelion's favor. Yeah, definitely so. They're sitting at, what is it, 659 points right now for that bonus. And we've got basically one hit left before save for him. These SI, they have a 2-2 right now with Hunter and Charger. Here it comes. Pounce, flying back and forth. Not going to land. The charge does get leveled. I don't know if he got any damage for that. It kind of looked like it cleared late, but uh, that's going to be pretty much a shutdown, just the one boom right there and survivors heading into that server. Like, wow, that, that tank fight, I mean, what a round. Bravo did the best to make make the most of a bad situation there, I feel like, with he managed to get a corner himself, he managed to get a second in cap with the car. Does he really? Do they really? Yeah. Oh Team my gosh. Are gonna be up 2588 to 2473. That's what I was talking about. Did they have the metal to throw Matt 2 out the window? Game is dumb. Arena is bad. Everyone sucks. Let's just play the game. And this is exactly what they were looking for. They're up by over 100 points now going into map 4 because of the fact they got the wipe and then they play the survivor side they need to. That right there is a team that could easily find its way to the grand finals if they're able to recover like that. And now. It's going to be Hibs tank for Team Daddy, and I believe Hota's tank for Team Aphelion, 32%. This could be huge piece in, because now they completely reverse that momentum going into the second, actually the final two maps of this game. Yeah, well, not completely reversed. I mean, they've completely reversed from the map one scenario, right? But they, yeah, they definitely, like, stabilized again from, like, what happened on map two. Definitely showing Team Daddy that they cannot take things easy. You know, I mean, yeah, they were up by 500 points, but that doesn't mean so much when you're about to get outplayed like hell yeah. on map three of the parish. Exactly, and that is what just happened. So now Team Daddy are on their back foot a little bit, and now they've really got to do the damage before the tank, but this tank is going to be huge. Okay, 32% is probably going to be the street area, and that could go 
one of two ways, obviously. Like, sometimes it does okay damage, but they really need as much damage, if not a wipe. And right here, Team Aphelion baiting that door. M2 and the Jockey, they got the Spitter to go, and now they're trying to pick through the wall. It's not working. Hunter goes in, does manage to get a little bit of chip damage. That Charger is still up right there. Gonna get a stumble, and they actually can do this now. They have Reloading. points. They are ahead. It's not really a scenario where they have to do anything reckless. They're just gonna play wow. as controlled as they can, you know? Yeah, and I mean, that opening hit... Just SI Reloading. throwing themselves at a safe room door while Aphelion calmly takes them out one by one. Mm, that is not that is not a good omen for our friends on uh, Team Daddy right there. But we'll have to see Tank will be coming up in about 10%. Next tank going in out. with the single boom. Pole gonna get a little bit of separation in the back, not really kind of pulls the survivors together. Caps coming in one at a time, one at a time. They do manage to get with that like a small damage amounts maybe, maybe like 5 damage, I don't know. But uh, not a huge amount of damage, but we do have a total of about 35 on the board at this point. Actually more like 45. And so it should be spawning like, it should be spawning very very soon. And as soon as it does, we are going to be taking it over to that team. Daddy Worm for a tank in the hands of the one only I'm Papa eating. Hib. Let's go right over now and wait a minute, we have a pause, hold on. I want to I wanna see if Don, is Donnie crashing again, or is there another, like, is this a ZSN pause for strats? Hmm. Yeah, Donnie's not crashed, I don't think. Hmm. That's interesting, oh, because... Oh. I don't know, maybe, maybe they're talking about exactly what they want to do, or someone else is lagging out, but I think I all mean, the things are pretty good. Most likely somebody's lagging or has some issue that they need to deal with. But yeah, it could always be a ZSN strategic pause. <laughs> Tank is up. Decide what you're going to do. It almost looks like, from my angle, that the tank's like getting shot through the wall or something. I don't know. I think it's just a glitch. Should I um, check War Room? And do we want to go did, for that War Room? Don Donate did just mess with me and say that if he stops moving during Tank, it's because his internet went out. He said he got a big lag spike right then. Aww. Yeah. Aww. Big lag spike. Indeed. All right. Well, now let's go over to Team Daddy Worm because Hib is the tank. He got guns. Only just one in the sack, so he can just get a crouch boom off the roof. That works too. It's on the roof. It's actually in a really good play. They're going inside. They're going in. Going in. Going in. Go 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 the window. You could so go in and uh, they're going back, they're going back. Reloading. Go back on the roof, go back on the roof, go back on the roof, go back on the roof. Go back on the, roof. the car's on the roof. I had the charger in the pool room, so... Reloading. I might even go ahead. What? You can get there. They're trying to go in, sort of. Yeah, they're really ready to run you inside right now. You gotta that car and then just go in. We gotta They're set up in front of him, like Charger. Yeah, yeah, I am, I am. They're going inside. They're inside, Hib. Yeah, my tank's AI. I don't know. We should what have a right stupid ass call. What? 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 You're a stupid tank. <laughs> Sam told me to do that. Go, bro. Oh my god. So lucky. Well. Sam told you to what? To go roof! He said the car's on the roof. Reloading! And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, from that Team Daddy War Room. Tank started off in the hands of Hib, but ended in the hands of the AI. AI got one punch inside that room, and that was about all. That's the second tank we've seen go AI this map so far. That one was not related to an internet issue or anything of the sort, and PSIM, that's a pretty big blunder. The survivors just outpositioned him. Yeah, definitely so. He needed to pick some area to commit from there and just go for it, but uh, too much back and forth, and it's a pretty re easy read in that area by uh, Team Aphelion right there to say, oh hey, the tank's on top now, we can just go inside. And uh, he was definitely way too constrained on... I mean, even if he didn't go AI, they wanted to go in that position anyway, so it's really... I mean, Hib should have... Yeah. Daddy just should have seen that coming overall. Here comes the next hit, though. Counts, spin, shut down pretty much. and smoke. 
And yeah, it's shut down, but a fair amount of spit Someone's damage down onto it. Ellis on Andrew's show right there. I'm a little bit, I don't want to say flabbergasted at the moment, but like in a situation like that, he, he went back to the roof, and I think that was really what did it. Like, if he had committed in, or like committed in from inside to flush them back out when he was standing in the room, he could have jumped down and just forced them out to the street or something, but instead, he went to the roof to try and either get some kind of hittable, or he just tried to do something like that where it was a high risk play in a lot of ways that went against the conventional wisdom and it resulted in an AI tank. Charger is going to land on the side of this. Spit did overshoot though. Hunter is now going to land onto that same survivor, gets immediately cleared. Pretty much everything is going to be shut down, except now we do have a death spit pull that does do a good amount of damage to Thug Life, but this is really going to put the pressure on the Team Daddy. Yeah, definitely looks that way. It's good damage uh, from the follow-ups to that hit, but not quite getting exactly what they wanted. We only have, I mean, the event's still going. There's probably going to be three or four more hits by the end of the map. But yeah. none of them are expected to do huge amounts unless you really get everything perfect. And look, looks, looks like the survivors are actually happy to sit in the side room. Here comes the hit, though. Pound's going to land. Jockey's going to land as well. And Spit, ooh, actually going to get stuffed right there, trying to land on the charger. It looks like the infected are a little... Are a little nonplussed at exactly what was going on right there. Are a little confused. Like, uh, I, I don't know Indeed. if that was something where it's just like at this point uh, they just don't know what's going on. Period, or if they're still actually asking. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that Purple Stream is lively at the moment. I'm sure that Rock that Storm is also pretty entertaining. I mean, this is the point now where you got to say mentally, right? Team Ophelion had like the biggest just issue happen with them that possibly could have with a tank going AI, and then they recovered from that. And now the thing is, the Team Daddy have a chance to recover from this AI, like do they have the ability to somehow like play survivors, shut down that tank, and then find a way to still pull this game out. Obviously they have a lot less time to recover than Team Aphelion did, and Aphelion's still sitting pretty right now with a great health bonus, almost a thousand points before these last, what, like hit and a half or something like that, so it's getting down to the wire at this point, and I obviously Team Aphelion just using the fact they have that momentum on their side and that control to do what they're doing. Smoker Pool goes out with a stick going down on the coach as well, but then coach is able to move. Coach still on top is gonna get pounced though. He is gonna get cleared from the side of those trash bags. Almost put himself out of reach of those guns, but instead, just a little bit of chip damage going out. Let's see now if they can just kill the switch cleanly and then make that safe for him. Yeah, they do have some SI in spawn, but not really gonna be happening right there. Which actually getting stuck in that trash can. And that's going to be it. Oh, pull to the back and get self-cleared by Hoto right there. Not going to take any of that. And Survivor is still holding over 800 points of bonus as they head to the safe room right here. They only have two SI up in spawn. Probably going to go for some last-second last YOLO attacks. There's a YOLO jockey. Not getting Reload. anything. Reload. I think they're Charger. throwing the spawns in at this point. Like, they really don't have a full hit to go with. Charger does get a punch and almost gets a charge. Does get the stumble on the Rochelle, but no follow-up punch. And the Smoker and the Hunter are the last two things. Smoker's gonna swap on the side, gets shot through the wall. And the Hunter is gonna try to land, and he gets taken out. So that's gonna be Team Ophelion reaching the safe room once again. And that's gonna be an over 4K point score for them so far. 4,084 points going into the second half of map four. And do I think dropping in that window is easy? No, I don't believe, I, like sometimes it can be, I guess, but you have to like strafe jump into it. So if you don't know how to do that, it could be rather difficult. It doesn't have to be open first. That too. Or something. Yeah, there's like a glass pane that's there, right? Yeah, I think, I mean like high level play now, don't you? I think you like don't shoot that window out because of things like that. Yeah, I want to say that like, it, it depends on a couple of those things. It's like, oh, I'll just do that, but yeah, that's one of the things, it's, it's, I've seen it done before, and when it works, it works really, really well. But even in the position that he was in, right, like, he, I think he tried to jump into it. But even if he did that and somebody figured out he was above them, they might have been able to backpedal to the street and just work him around until he went AI. Like, I mean, it's one of those things where, yeah, okay, it would have improved his position, but that wasn't the key mistake that he made. It's also the kind of thing where if he tried that and fucked it up, you guys would all be laughing at him just the same, so... Go, you can't have it all. I don't know, what I think happened there on that tank is just, like, you want to be in, like, there's a prime position to commit, depending on where the survivors are. You want to be on the roof if they're outside. You want to be in one of the windows if they're on the inside. And Aphelion just made the reads faster than, than Hib's side did. 
and was able to like out position him back and forth repeatedly and uh, they weren't ready to make the commit at any of those points so rather than committing from a suboptimal position it just I don't know let it go it went AI yeah. I feel like the like the cut your losses sort of version of that would have probably been to use when he jumped into the window the survivors were down in that kitchen slash bar area he really just should have pushed through and done the commit from right there I know that's not where he wants to commit from but uh, that was probably the best option he had out of like all of the instances during that tank fight. Yeah, and Yem's saying in chat too that yeah, there, there can be a question of like, you know, easy isn't an argument that you make when you're this far in the playoff bracket. That's true. Like, if that would have been the thing that he needed to do in order to like do that, you'd expect it to happen from one of these two teams. But I, I still contend that it was a little bit of an error when he went back to the top of the roof in the first place, like when he gave up that better position that he had for whatever reason he gave it up. So, I mean, I mean, the merit is great. Something we'll, we'll, we'll back and see if that turns out to be something else that maybe even Team Aphelion has to do. But the thing now is, you know, if they're able to keep the control and avoid Team Daddy from pushing inside, like if they keep it in the street area, that has a chance to do a lot more damage. If they have three spawns and a human-controlled tank, that typically has the ability to do a lot more damage, and Hota is a great tank. So we'll see exactly how that goes. Indeed we shall, as soon as uh, Aphelion's last two players ready up right here. And Dane has been having some internet issues, but he has rejoined the server, and it's going to be Dane and Thug Life to ready up, and then Team Daddy now facing an over 1600 point differential right now going into the survivor round. The pressure hasn't been higher, I don't think, on them so far in this game, and now it's going to really just depend on can they keep it together, can they avoid getting separate, can they avoid taking unnecessary damage before they get to this, like, I don't know, they, they actually have to make the safe, screw unnecessary damage before the tank, they need to make this map. And let's see, because now Hota has changed his name to Aphelion.Mazin, and he says that there's a tank wipe incoming. The last time he said that, when he was playing against a couple of people on the other team, he managed to deliver. Let's see if he can do it again. We are live. Team Daddy on the survivor side, and Team Aphelion on the special infected. First hit the Hunter, Spitter, Jockey, and Charger piece in. Indeed it is. Looks like the SI actually going to wait for the survivors to get out of the safe room on this one. But uh, there's going to be plenty of baiting to go around. Here comes the hit. Ooh, or at least some pre-spawns. Not even gonna go. Nice speed onto that hunter right there. Charger's gonna be in the chalet, and that was a predictive spit in the corner right there. Jockey landing as well. Wow. Wow. That's almost 60 damage off of the opening hit already, and it's almost all onto Bravo right there. Bravo Bravo sitting at 47 HP. He got the skeet, but then the charge was managed land. As you mentioned, that was a pre-spit that landed in that corner first. Pre-spit the corner, Charger got the land. I don't even know if he got a swipe onto it before it hit him. And now, Team Daddy, that's going to be one survivor who's going to have to pop pills at that tank, most likely, to avoid being a three-punch down. They're going to make it into the room right here to get that tank spawned up. Spitter going in, not going to do much of anything, obviously. And the tank is up in the hands of Hota for Team Aphelion. We are going to keep it right here for this tank fight. And I'm curious, because the survivors are in a similar position now to where Team Aphelion were standing, but I don't think the tank's going to move from that window piece, if i got to be honest. Yeah, that's a pretty good call. I mean, we saw how Aphelion managed to juke the tank around when he tried to do roof positionings and other things, so this is probably the safest spot to maintain a high ground position over the survivors, no matter which way they go. And now he is actually going to drop out the back here, so he is climbing now up onto the top of this roof. And that's interesting because now if he decides to commit in from there, the survivors could go inside and they are indeed going to try, but they're going to have one survivor split. That's him getting split outside. And now he's going to get cornered right there by Hota. He was not able to make it inside with the rest of his team. Hota moving around, switching targets though. Now he's whipping punches. He didn't get the corner. Now, and that pull's going to miss. Hunter gets taken out. Smoker gets M2. Tank does finally get a down there, but he's going to die. Peace him. I think he should have taken that down on him. Perhaps so, yeah, he kind of thought, it kind of looked like maybe he thought the, uh, the SI would be able to get that or was trying to mitigate getting chipped from some of these other survivors while he did so. But um, yeah, they came out of it only getting that one in cap onto Bravo, basically. And Hib ended up taking out both the Hunter and the Smoker right there, so... Because he didn't get that down, all the SI came from the same area, and I mean, if he got another corner, that would have been good, but that Hunter does match land. Jockey is going to get him to charge spit, does land onto him. Actually, the spit didn't land. The spit spit, and it bounced off the oh my top gosh. of the garage door. Yeah, oh that's my. pretty amazing spit positioning right there. 
Um, you mentioned him taking out both of those SI during the tank. Actually, I was watching the kill feed. I think somehow uh, Sam Red Start actually got the kill on the Hunter. As it was jumping in the door there, like him did not quite have the Uzu speed on it. But, I mean, overall, he spaced them out and basically took them out on his own. Just a little bit of help here and there. Nice but, yeah. by Sam on that Hunter. Jockey does land for a second. Charger is going to barely miss two of the survivors. And this is going to be a nail biter, Team Sim, if they can keep this health because that would be comparable to what Team Affiliate made, and we do see Team Affiliate checking that health line right now, because there are only a few more hits left. This could come down to the lovely, lovely, lovely Parish finale, if they manage to keep it within a range of like three and 400 points, because I do believe the distance has been nerfed just a tad in Ace Mod, and I do believe there is also an early tank, and Dawkins saying, G Willikers, I sure hope so. Yeah. As, as it has been said many a time, there's no such thing as luck on the Parish finale, and so ah. it's... Always a great place to see matches end. There comes a nice double boom spin. Going to be employed on the corner. Managing to get Sam pounced off of that and a pull cap going out as well. Chip, 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 chip. Taken away from that uh, health bonus bit by bit, but uh, nothing huge coming out. Right, and now they are going to be able to push this choke, it seems. Hib a little bit behind in the back, but there are no spawns to capitalize on him. They don't have any pills. They're going to be getting one set, however at the, or at least one set I would say, at the pill cabinet up ahead. And then after that, they should be able to push into the street. There are only a couple more hits up. There is a witch though, and that enforce can always be interesting. But we actually have a separation jockey going in right now. In the back, the clear goes out. Bravo is gonna get charged right there. Boomer getting scratches all over the place as well, but Bravo is damage bonus at this point instead of health. Only 66 damage bonus left for Team Daddy. About 400 health bonus though, and that's all on Sam and Purple. Look at this, the quad shotguns are coming out. It's an N18 Finally. nearing the end of a map. Well, yeah, plus Parish, I feel, is one of those areas where that could be, like, maximized most efficiently due to the fact that it's kind of close corridors. Jockey going in, one scratching that door, getting taken out, and they're actually going to keep pushing on that. Moving to the right-hand side, Sam is leading. He does have the health bonus as well. Gets the M2 on the smoker, shuts him down. Charger looking for a spawn, not going to get it. And Team Daddy are not letting this one go silently whatsoever. They're moving to the side, and it looks as though it's going to be on hit maybe to draw this witch. I'm not entirely sure. Or they're just going to bypass it entirely. Actually, it's on Bravo, but that's a separation charge going out. Nice clear. Bravo gets the crown. That was almost very bad for Purple, but there was no spitter ready to capitalize on that charger. The spitter was in Q, but wasn't able to get the spit on the bonus. And now this is going to be close. Hib is the last survivor, looks like, to get in due to the fact that he is slow. Hunter's pointing up, going for Scratch is not going to land. Delay stick going in. They close the door. And we have a 4,084 to 3,569 game in the favor of Team Aphelion going into the finale. That is definitely recoverable. And it all comes down to this. Indeed it does. That's 500 points. So we're definitely going to be looking for some sort of a wipe, not wipe situation here, I feel like. Uh, otherwise, it just has to be a huge amount of health bonus difference between these teams. But yeah, it does come down to the finale once again. Amazing to see how things have turned. This is now now this is the full momentum shift that you mentioned. Like after map two, this was the situation for Team Daddy. They were up by like 500, 600 points, and uh, now we have Aphelion in the same situation, up by five 500 points going into this finale. Yeah, and I mean, because of the way that it's gone, like, I do believe there is an early... I, honestly, I haven't played Parish in the past, like, two and a half months, so I'm not sure if there still is an early tank. I know somebody can check me on that. But if there is, that means you got this early tank and then the one that's in the middle, along with the nerf distance that I talked about before. It, and, I mean, the early tank, again, knock on wood, I don't know if Left 4 Dead is a very superstitious eSport, but, I mean... Wiping here would be just catastrophic for either team, especially obviously for Team Daddy because they're already behind by 400 points. Like they need to somehow find a way to kill Aphelion and then make it, probably with bonus. Did did early hit coming out right there. Out is gonna land right there. They're gonna get spit on top of that as well as Dan tries to go for that button. Great damage onto Hota as well. Wow, that's a great opener from Team Daddy getting over 60 damage, and they do have an early tank right here into the hands of Papa Bravs. Indeed. How about we take it over to a Team Daddy Warm, because this tank's job is probably to do damage before that second tank, or before those next hits to get a wipe. Let's send over and see how they decide to play it. I like going to I know, I'm just saying, they hit the first button. If they do hit it, if Let me kill it. I can just jump. Yes. Okay. Okay. Can you guys get a hit? Just get a full hit. Full hit. All right.
We risk we getting jump. a boomer. I think we could jump safe for him. I don't want to risk that. Uh, we risk getting a boomer now. Yeah. You could probably, you could land it at the truck probably. So where do we want? No, no boomer. no boomer. Where is he pulling from? We normally pull from bridge and then down that guy right away, but up to you. Okay. Couple of bounty. Get that guy in the He's clearing me. Oh, never mind. That's a wave. Oh, oh shit. Supra. He got ledged by my guys. <laughs> no. I don't really know Cover how. Cover him just in case. There you go. I mean, either way, it would have been a wipe because. We cannot wipe through this. We just have to kill the tank. Like, everyone yep. has to just shoot it. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. That's the early tank wipe. The early tank wipe going out from Team Daddy onto Team Ophelia. And those spawns in the safe room. I was questioning why. Coach was going back there. I thought he was getting ammo originally, right? If you just have someone looking at the safe room instead, regardless of the fact the tank got the early corner onto Rochelle, that was another issue. But if you stand near the door, that's where you know the spawns are going to be coming from. Unless he's focusing the spawns completely, right? Then he's going to have an, an opportunity to get pounced or jockeyed like we saw right there. And that's exactly what happened. The tank got a corner, Smoker got the separation, and that jockey inside the safe room took Super out of the equation completely. And now this is, in my opinion, Team Daddy's game to lose. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, this is, this is a very treacherous tank fight, and there's a lot of ways to wipe on it, but I think... Uh, most of the teams sort of know that the, the basic strategy is you stay on top of stuff where the tank can't punch you, and you don't go out of line of sight of each other, and uh, both of those principles sort of got violated there. Nice charge to my hit with the jockey going in as well. Man, a three are not letting it go, and Sam is jumping into Oh it. my god. Oh that's, my goodness. That's even more damage. That's over <laughs> 80 damage from that insane. opening hit. On to Team Daddy. Super oh now. Holding I thought they were the gonna tank. take it in the safe room for a second. Like for some reason, we went to got ammo. I was like, no, there's no way. There's no way they possibly could. They're gonna put all four people on top of that. They're not gonna move, and Sam's not gonna do what he did in the semifinals of RBT3 and accidentally start the horde by hitting the button. Yeah, hitting the button can be sort of a move, but uh, probably not without proper Uzis and damage output and. Uh, Usually it's better to just have no horde with these things. Super trying to make some sort of a jump right here. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe just waiting things out, waiting for their SI to show up. They do have Smoker Jockey Charger, which is pretty comparable to the SI setup we saw for the first half. That Smoky Jocker being really the most important ones to have, and then the other capper just needs to, you know, find something someone to land on, which is usually doable in some way. But we are yeah, on second pass. Uh oh. Yeah, we're second pass, he's gonna be going in. For some reason, I really don't like Charger here, right? Because that, that Charger really can't get up top. Like, the Hunter can pounce up there, the Jockey can jump, but Super is gonna be going in. Smoker gets the pull, but gets picked, actually, before he even lands. Super does have a corner on the L, so all three survivors focusing on him right there with a melee going out. Well, down to 600 health, and that is gonna be a dead tank. Jockey gets cleared, the Charger does land, but oh my goodness, piece him, they have a chance right now. They took a good amount of damage right there. Super got his corner. The SI were able to land and at least give him a little bit more damage. You look at this, this is now pretty much even for the rest of this chapter. Indeed it is, and I've been renamed a Prodigy V-Boy, but yeah, there's still about a, what is a 600 point deficit? Yeah. Uh, a little bit less. Closer to 500, I guess. 530 or so, and there's plenty of ways, I mean, there are railings across the sides of this finale though, so it's a little bit harder to get charged off, but there's still plenty of ways to wipe before that point. We do have three of the survivors booming. There goes the single boom right there. Looks like they're just going for a damage hit right now. Spit, actually a great bank spit right there. It doesn't do the full spread, but uh, still putting some damage in. Alright, well, these points are going to keep getting closer and closer as they tick up right here. And right now, a big, big part of it, they have one set of pills left on the sand, right? And there are another, I think, four sets of pills in the truck that is near where the tank is supposed to spawn, right? Not not in terms of where the survivors get to, but in terms of where the tank spawns sure. physically, right? So it, they really need to not take 
much damage at all as these next couple hits get so close right now. We're inching up. 300 points really separating between these two teams just about. There is a charger in the spawn queue. Hunter, Jockey, and a spitter for the rest. Charger's flying in front. Go ahead and nice try to have a spin. Landing on a team daddy right in the middle of there. A picture perfect attack from Team Affiliate melting their health away. They were trying to make that tank a non-issue. Yeah, it definitely looks that way. That's a huge amount of damage. We've got Hib and Sam slow, and Bravo is actually slow as well at 37 HP. They need to make it to these next set of pills, but there's a lot of distance before work. that. And honestly, if they're all slow, the tank can probably cut them off before they make it to those pills. Next set coming in, we've got a two boom. Smoker not going to find the pullback quite yet, at least. Going to get cleared off, and now they just have a spitter and hunter, it looks like, to try to get some little chip damage. Man, it's same as so close. Here. Yeah. Hunter trying to get an in cap there, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, so Sam is very low, and they're they're going for those kills. I think Ellis Ellis wants to go far, but Ellis okay, is slow now. Everybody's kind of limping. Really and watch, if there's no second tank, if that's a change that was actually made to Ace Mod, that's gonna turn this into an absolute just just. There is one they're supposed to be. Oh, there it is. Okay, well the tank is up. Uh -oh. The tank's actually kind of far out. The tank's in the hands of Donne right here, and they're trying to get those pills. Oh they my. They can't do this. Oh they my god. They can't do it, but they're going to try. There's the jockey going out, and that's going to be... Looks like actually Donne missed the punch right there. Purple oh! is going to get death punch. And now they're inside the truck. They're going to pick up one set of pills, but Donne got the corner. This is going to be... Actually, Hit got out of that somehow. Smoker pulls out now. They're trying to get some kind of death charge. And they're not gonna get it. The Charger Man is to land, and Hib is now gonna be forced to run forward, it looks like. That's gonna miss, and Hib is still up, and there's about 121 points separating these two teams. Hib is not dead. There is a smoker in the spawn queue right now going for a deep spawn, and this is all on him. Like, Hib can continue running and maybe get another 100 points, but Bravo already left. Right? If him can somehow self clear and shut down the entire hit, he could win the game for his team. I'm just looking at it right now because Hib is running forward. This smoker pretty much needs to land. Some people on Infected have already left, and there's smoker for makes it kind of anticlimactic. 41 21 to 40 16 in favor of Team Aphelion Project Sam, and they will play Pub Stars for the championship of the Hot Mess Tournament 2016. Wow, what a, what a game fighter of a match. That back and forth between those teams, just momentum shifting all over the place. And it finally looked like we'd see the comeback on that finale, but Aphelion just incredible SI play to turn it into a wipe. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it right there. Congratulations to Team Aphelion. Yeah, and there it is. So Team Daddy eliminated from the tournament right here in this. Obviously, it's, it's usually on Paris. Paris is usually reserved for the semifinals or the grand finals. But that matchup, if we just see, I believe it's, I don't know if it's, I think it's going to be one game actually next week between Pub Stars and Aphelion on an EU server. And that was one of the best Left 4 Dead matches I think I've ever casted, honestly, because of the way that that swung back and forth with the tank issue in the second chapter, turning the momentum back around, and then it being a 100-point game at the end on a best of one New York. You couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, definitely so. I'm glad at least it was a best of one. Very exciting to see. And, you know, I guess you do have to wonder, like, without Aphelion's uh, crash on map 2, what those scores would have looked like, would that game lo looked have looked any different? Yeah, probably I mean, so. Probably so. I mean, you, can, you can't really say for sure, but then, of course, you got to then say, like, the momentum changes back from teams at that point, too, where it's like it would have been closer, where they have played differently. And that's the way Left 4 Dead 2 goes sometimes, honestly, yeah. where that, that would have been in chats just saying it's the biggest choke of 2016. Uh, I feel like Hillary's choke was a little bit worse than that, but oh. uh, uh, she had a lot of political money on her side. I don't think there was a whole lot of funding going into Team Daddy's corner, you know what I mean? But this is this is definitely going to be one heck of a grand finals match I thought they watch. had a GoFundMe open. They might have had a GoFundMe open. Mind. Oh my god. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, thank you everybody for watching this. Obviously, thank you to the admins for server admitting as they do, and PSM, do you have any final words for the audience here before we sign it off? Uh, just crayon and purple. Crayon and purple. Nice, nice. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching tonight. And as I said, thank you to the server owners. Thank you to Dawkins for streaming this game. Everybody for coming out and the teams for playing. And now, at this point, we will give control of this stream back over to Mr. Dawkins. Dawkins, thank you for having us this fine evening. Danke, Dawkins.